Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad About Skin. In today's video, we continue our skincare roundup series. In this series, I break apart the very best and worst products in each section of our skincare routine. We've already covered retinoids, sunscreens, cleansers, all that good stuff, and I pulled those videos together in a playlist, which I'll leave a link to up there if you've missed out on any of them. It's been a little hot minute since I've actually filmed an addition in this series, and today we're gonna to talk about moisturizers. What are my top three holy grail moisturizers for 2022, and my three Wah, 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 total fails. Sit back, relax, and let's talk the best and worst moisturizers. Now, before we get into this video, I'm going to keep this intro short, sharp, and to the point. But sound off in the comments section below any products that have been your holy grails or total fails so far this year. Whatever your opinion of the moisturizers mentioned today, hopefully you'll also want to reach down and give this video a big thumbs up and a like. It's a fantastic way of supporting me and the channel, and you guys know it, but I'm always so, so appreciative for each and every one of you that takes that moment out of your day to like the content that I create here on the channel. Now, in true Mad About Skin style, let's cut that waffle and just delve straight on in. I'm all about the positives here on Mad About Skin, so of course I'm going to start with the ding 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 holy grails. I really try to hone it in on my top three, which is kind of the point of this series, but when it comes to moisturizers, there's just so much variety, you know, matching different skin types, budgets, and all of that. So I've got my top three, and then I've got a couple of honorable mentions that I'm going to come on to later in the video. Let's start with what I think is like a revelation discovery this year, and a product that I've absolutely been fangirling about, and it's this product. This is the Acne me. I think it's supposed to be like Acne Academy kind of together. I think that's where they were going with that. It's just really difficult to say. Zit Control Moisturizer. Now, this is actually a moisturizer and like a breakout suppressant. Is that the right word? What is it? Like a, an oil acne control product in one, if that makes sense. It actually comes in this gorgeous packaging. Um, a little bit wasteful. It's quite a lot of box for what is a very small product, I'm not going to lie. But I love the colour of this. It kind of stands out and the whole Acne Me line is like this hot, like acid yellow colour, which I personally absolutely love. And it's one of the main reasons I gravitated towards this product. But when you put this on the skin, it is divine and it really works wonders on acne, blemishes and the occasional zip. So in here you've got a beautiful blend of different ingredients that make up this standout formulation. You've got some zinc which is one of the best ingredients when it comes to regulating oil production in the skin. Lots of us will reach for niacinamide to do that but honestly zinc just works better, you're less likely to get irritation and it gives you that instant mattifying effect as well as some long-term benefits too. You've also got some salicylic acid in here which is my favourite like in pore exfoliator to reduce congestion, blackheads, which is some of the primary causes of those breakouts. You've also got some ceramides in here, you've got some antioxidants, and it's just all around a perfect, perfect hydrator, and also something that's going to tackle your breakouts. Why I'm calling this out as like the best of the best when it comes to moisturizers is this actually has the perfect ratio of ceramides to cholesterol to free fatty acids that are going to help with barrier support in the skin. Now, a lot of people reach for ceramides in their skincare routine, and brands like CeraVe shout about their including this in ingredient in their products. But what they don't tell you is actually to get the maximum benefits from your ceramides, they need to be like in that perfect ratio. Outside of that ratio, they'll hydrate the skin, absolutely, but they won't have that barrier support function that a lot of people are reaching for ceramides to achieve. This actually does. They don't make a big thing about it, they've just formulated it to perfection. And I just think it's really nice to have an oily skin moisturiser that'll deliver that barrier support, whilst at the same time giving meaningful hydration and reducing the risk of any breakouts and tackling excess oil in the skin all around just an absolute revelation when I tried this. And I've left links to it in the description box below, as will all the products mentioned today. Available internationally, and if like me, you're in your mid-30s, going into your 40s, 50s, still suffering with adult acne, and want a product that does it all, this is the one for you. Now, let's keep with barrier support. And in at number two is an oldie but a goodie. It's this product, the Stratia Liquid Gold. Now, this is a product that I probably buy every two months. It's not the cheapest out there. You know, here in the UK, it comes in at around the 28 to 30 pounds price point, but it is genuinely so good that I will buy it time and time again. In the States, Stratia is a little bit cheaper, and I'll find some discount codes. They're not linked to this channel specifically, but I'll find some discount codes that I'll link in the description box too if you do want to save a little coin on your Stratia purchase. Purchases. This I adore. It boosts the barrier function of the skin, hydrates you to the gods. It calms, it soothes, it works for all skin types, but I think it's best for those drier or combination dry skin types because it's just so deeply nourishing and enriches the skin rather than just giving like a temporary fix to the hydration levels. This, as you can see, has been used to the last drop. I've got another two already in stock, so I'm not going to be without this product. And I tend to reach for this on the days where I need a little extra hydration in my life, but I want something that's still really lightweight. This 
just delivers it time and time again. If you've got dry skin type, you might want to use this as like a pre-moisturizer rather than your standalone moisturizer, but it lays beautifully well with other products beneath and on top of it. You should all around it, ding, 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 holy grail. Now finally in like what I call the top three before I get into the honorable mentions is this. This is the Revectin Clean Lotus Water Cream, a favorite from the Korean skincare market. I love pretty much all of the Revectin line and I think they're one of the few brands that genuinely does clean skincare well. There's not an international definition of meaning of what that term actually means but Revectin on their website are really clear about what it means to them and they have taken out some of the potentially irritating ingredients that you see in some common skincare brands. I like that because it gives people with a sensitive skin type other options in the moisturizer market and this is just a really really nice product. If you've got oily acne prone skin like me one thin layer of this is all you need. If you've got a drier skin type you might want to put multiple layers but you can do that. Layers beautifully well on top of itself and it's just super super lightweight. Unlike a lot of fragrance free moisturizers it doesn't have that slightly off-putting gluey scent to it which I'm not a big fan of. It just is a really really nice product that blends in seamlessly and just I don't know just delivers everything you want from a moisturizer. You can as you see there's no glossiness there's no dewiness it doesn't leave that film on the skin and you can keep this in the fridge for a little cooling action in your routine in those warm summer months. Absolutely adore this one. Now, I've got four honourable mentions. I realise this is really cheating because you shouldn't really have more honourable mentions than you do in the actual top three. I know, but you know what? <laughs> Here we are. I just want to share with you some products very quickly that I think really could have gone into this top three. It could work really well for certain people. This is the Pharmology Moisturiser. Love this one. The reason it's not in the top three is you can only get this in the UK. But if you're here in the UK, this is stocked in boots. It's stunning. It's got oat in here to calm and soothe the skin. It's super hydrating. It's 88 pence. I mean, you can't argue with that price for the amount of product you get. Cruelty free, made here in the UK, so it's locally sourced. It's just all around like a really nice good guy moisturizer. One that does it all, has some really nice ethics that sit behind it. And Pharmology are definitely a brand that I'm going to be exploring in a little bit more detail, particularly because they are Hampshire based, which is where I am in the UK. Such a great product, particularly great if you have very sensitive skin type and some inflammation. Reach for this, 88 8p, you can't go wrong. Um, at the opposite end of the price spectrum is this, the um, Allies of Skin Molecular Barrier Recovery Cream Balm. Stunning. Literally amazing. The reason it's not in the top three is do I think you need to spend like £60 on a moisturiser? Absolutely not. But if you've got impaired barrier function, you want something to help support with repairing that, but also hydrate you to the gods, instantly calm and soothe any irritation that you might have in the skin. This just does it. You know, you've got in here, you've got your ceramides, you've got your calming, soothing ingredients, you've got some peptides, you've got some really nice botanicals, you've got some O extract just everything. I think it's genuinely worth that higher price point, but I didn't want to include it in the top three because I know that not everyone's budget, particularly in these times, will stretch to it. But a stunning, stunning product. It's actually a funny story behind this. I put this in like an anti-haul video saying, I'm not going to be buying this because it's newly launched and I love the formulation. I know that I'm going to fall in love with this product. So I'm not buying it because I kind of just don't want to subject myself to the higher price point, love it, and then have to buy it again. And I of skin clearly watched that video and said, Rob, we'd love to send you this product and sent it amongst some other their favourites. I was like, great, now I'm hooked. And I, of course, bought another one, and this is like my second tube of it. <laughs> it is really good. But I thought it was kind of a funny story. They're clearly good at their PR and marketing, because then you have to, like, hook me and reel me in. And there's... I do genuinely like. If you don't mind paying just a little bit more for your moisturiser. Now the final two honourable mentions are both drugstore. This is the Superdrug Naturally Radiant Glow. Love this moisturiser. It has got some perfume in so if you like an element of the sensorial, this has a really nice scent to it. It's got some nice calming and soothing botanicals in here. Some ingredients are going to help with the microbiome of the skin which I think you know is an underappreciated function of our skin. The microbiome really does protect us from certain bacteria and just keeps the skin in tip top health. I really enjoy this for that reason and I like the fact that it's got calming and soothing ingredients with a little fragrance so just be mindful of that but a really nice product that I think cost me like a pound fifty doesn't need to break the bank and is really good. Now finally, if you're in mainland Europe, and I'm devastated that I bought this when I was shopping in Europe, but can't get it here in the UK, which is a total shame because it's one of my favorites. You could though pick up this. This is the Biotin Multi Collagen Moisturizer. This was like two euros, 75 cents. So not expensive at all. It does have an SPF of 10 in it, which is completely pointless. So don't buy this for like the SPF though. You know what? 10 is better than nothing, I guess. It's, but I would use another SPF alongside it. The reason I love this is it's just got a great form 
formulation for that price point. You've got some collagen boosting peptides in here. You've got collagen itself, which when you apply it to the skin, it doesn't increase the skin's collagen, but it does hydrate and nourish, which I love. It's those peptides that are going to boost the collagen. It's got loads of antioxidants, including vitamin E. It's got some glycerin, which is a great humectant, some fatty alcohols to really soften the skin. Just all around a fantastic, fantastic moisturizer. It is ridiculously thick. So this is definitely going to be one that I'll work for people with a more dryness prone skin type, but it is just stunning. I wish I picked up more of this while I was over in Portugal, but you know what? It's just an excuse to go on holiday again, isn't it? If you put this on the skin, it takes a little time to work in because it's so, so thick, so rich. But when you do, oh, it is so, so good. It's got lots of naturally derived ingredients. So if that's your thing and you like a little natural skincare, this is definitely a brand that would sing to that kind of ethos. But scent of it, very lightly fragranced, just an all around delightful product. Perfect if you've got a dry skin type in summer. Now I've treated you to like, I think there was eight or whatever holy grails there. All those honorable mentions are just in my opinion, just as good as the top three that I called out. But unfortunately with every holy grail, there does have to be a couple of wah, 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 total fails. And this is really what I want to come on to in this section of the video. The three moisturizers that I've tried, I probably won't be recommending. Let's start off with like a range of products. This is the La Roche-Posay Effaclar. So this is actually sent to me. I don't buy La Roche-Posay because they're not yet entirely cruelty free. This was sent to me and I wanted to put it through its paces on my oily acne prone skin because this is a range that's designed with that type of skincare in mind and designed to really, you know, give you all you need but not clog the pores, not break you out, not leave you feeling really greasy. Um, they make a lot of claims on their boxes when it comes to this Effaclar range and I just honestly was totally underwhelmed by all of them. The moisturizers in this are okay but they did break me out which is kind of goes against the core ethos of this particular line of products from La Roche-Posay and um, I also found that they didn't really give any meaningful hydration and the ones that did were quite greasy to the touch. I just think there's better moisturizers out there than the Effaclar ones from La Roche-Posay so maybe shop around. Another brand which this I fell in love with but won't be repurchasing for a couple of reasons. So I reached for this. This is the Olay Beauty Fluid. A product that I tried when I was doing like my vintage skincare try on. I'll leave a link to that video up there. You guys went mad for that video um, and I know that it's a favourite of a lot so I might do like a second edition of that. Um, check it out and let me know if that's something that you'd look for. So I tried this, the Olay Beauty Fluid. Been around for decades. It's super lightweight. It felt really good on application. I loved the scent. It's just got that traditional like Ole summer scent, which I absolutely loved. And it has some really nice hydrating properties to it. However, the more I read into Ole, first of all, they're not a cruelty-free brand. That matters to me. It doesn't matter to absolutely everyone. And I always think when it comes to purchasing skincare, use what works for you, research the brands, make sure that they meet your individual ethics and what you're looking for out of them. This obviously isn't cruelty-free, so I was not going to repurchase it after I'd filmed that video. Um, and that broke my heart because you know what? The more I read into like Ole as a brand, no, <laughs> no. I it's just not one that I would feel comfortable reaching for day in, day out, alongside just the cruelty-free stuff. They also have some other things going on with them. It's not a brand that I personally would reach for. And I think that's sad because this is actually a really nice product. It was really lightweight. It kind of filled that market. You know, if you've got combo skin, you want something that hydrates you but doesn't weigh you down, this worked really well and was like three pounds. But no, it's the brand. I just can't. No, I just can't. So <laughs> that unfortunately is a fail for me. More about the brand than the actual product itself. And then finally, I'm going to come on to this. This is the Dr. Sam Flawless Moisturizer. I love everything from the Dr. Sam line, bar this product. Um, the moisturizer, I found just really confusing. It was not it was too heavy and too thick for my oily, acne-prone skin type. So I gave it away to a friend that has a much drier skin type and said that it didn't do enough, but did leave like a greasy film on the skin. And I know when I've mentioned this product before, lots of you guys said, yeah, it's one of those products that just doesn't really work for any skin type. And I think that's a shame because actually the formulation looks pretty good, but it's quite heavy. It definitely leaves a film on the skin. It could break you out if you've got an oily, acne prone skin type and it's not enough it's not rich enough if you've got a drier skin type so who is this really suiting and I think that's the core problem with this particular product which is a shame because the rest of the Dr. Sam line is stunning I'll leave a link to that video that I did reviewing it up there if you want to check out more from them really really good 
this to me is a pass. Now they do do a moisturizer light, which works beautifully well for oily acne prone skin types. So I think if you want to shop a moisturizer from this brand, go for the light version, which just works better. They do a body one as well, which I guess you could use on the face. And again, much lighter than this one. I think it's the standard moisturizer that's the problem. The rest of the moisturizers in the line actually are really, really good. And it's nice that the brand offer different textures. It's just that one, isn't it? So there you have it guys, a rundown of my three holy grails and a lot of honorable mentions and three total fails in the moisturizer category. This could all change next year. I'm constantly trying out new products and I want to really bring you this style of content so you know, you know, get a little inspiration for your own skincare routine. But it's always worth remembering, if you've got a moisturizer that's your holy grail, don't toss it out, cling onto it like it's your best friend. These are just the products that work for me, but promise me you'll shout about it in the comments section below. And wherever you are in the world, guys, stay safe, stay well, love your skin. Take care. Bye.